I definitely was going to start off this chair acquisition singing Shut Your Fucking Face, Uncle Fucker, but we don't have time for that. There it is. <laughs> yeah. Um, and and the graphics are all the right size, too. Uh, this is the chair acquisition. This is where you take a game, we tell you how it runs, if it, if it launches for one, how it runs, how the graphics show up, and how it controls. And then we tell we break it down. We maybe tell you how we feel about this game, how it touches us in that special place, just like many of our uncles actually did. Uh, this week, we're taking a look at a story about my uncle from Gone North Games done on Unreal Engine 3, not 4, 3. Um, three? Oh, that's why it runs decently. Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what is it? A story about my uncle is a first person platforming adventure about a boy who searches for his lost uncle and ends up in a world he couldn't imagine existed. Take help of your uncle's mysterious inventions. <laughs> you jump incredibly hot, high and far through beautiful scenery. Uncover clues to your uncle's whereabouts and meet fantastic creatures that will help you along your journey. Um, yeah. So we rate everything on a scale from one to four chairs. One chair means that it's crap. Four chairs means that's amazing. So let's let's get let's get into this. Ven, how did a story about my uncle run on the Ubuntu's? Hey, on the Ubuntu's, Whee! the LTS's, it runs. <laughs> Not a problem. I mean, uh you know it's Unreal Engine 3. I thought it was UE4. I was gonna give them all props that whoa, a UE4. No, it's title. UE3. It's, I know it's I I've already been deflated. Wah, wah. Uh however, how it's Runs at 60. Hope you like 60. That's what's going to run at 60 on the 980 and the mm. 2060. 60, because 60. Huh. <laughs> and that's not just the RTX talking, like I said, man. Uh, graphics looks all right. It's serviceable. I mean, th they were giving this game away a couple of, like, a, a couple of weeks ago, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, price to sell. Uh, control. It's first person. You can use a controller. Jordan's like, Right in the show notes, man. He was like, yo, try to use it with a controller. He didn't say that directly. It was just reading. So I grabbed the X-Clone controller and it's like, oh, nope, fuck this. Uh-uh, because -uh, I immediately plummeted to my death with the touch of a single <laughs> button. But I did use uh, your standard WASD, uh, left click, click, right click. It works. Clean bill of health, man. You can safely purchase this knowing that it will not say disparaging remarks about your uncle. <laughs> Although it probably should. Yeah, on uh, Fedora 2864-bit with the uh, i7-6700 AGTX 1080 Ti, it definitely does launch. And regardless of you're playing it at 1080p, UHD, whatever, V-Sync off, V-Sync on, it is locked at 60 frames a second. So you better fucking like 60 FPS. Um, Graphics-wise, it's not terrible looking. I, I, My first impression was this kind of reminds me of like a UE4 tech demo almost, except it's Unreal Engine 3, <laughs> which is either a compliment or an insult. I'm not quite sure just yet. Um, <laughs> but the, the, you could, I'll let, I'll let you make up your own mind. Uh, Control-wise, yeah, WASD works. Um, I got to say, though, the whole right-click to long jump can fuck right off, though. Every Especially time I when went you to go jump. off a cliff, right? You, you just yeah. run to your death every time. <laughs> yeah. It, no, because every other game in history has trained me that space is jump, except in this game where it's not. Um, yes, uh, Ven, Ven brought it up. Uh, I did try. I, I tried for like three seconds to play it with, with the with the dual shock. This guy, yeah. Um, it works, technically, <laughs> but it's also like playing a first-person shooter uh, with platforming elements with a Xbox with a Xbox or PlayStation 4 controller, you're not gonna have a good time, especially because you can't see your fucking feet. And I'll I'll talk more about that in the fun segment. But functional functionality wise, I gotta give it four chairs. Everything works. Yeah, uh, it. There was one instance on my end that the game froze, but it was just like the end game thing. I could still hit escape and get to the menu, so I just quit to the main menu and reloaded the game, and it didn't do anything like that ever again. So. Yeah, just a hiccup. Uh, the performance, yeah, it's just locked at 60. Uh, the This part that you're looking at, if you're watching the video version, um, the chasms. Yeah, the ground for me in certain areas was pitch black, and I'm pretty sure it wasn't supposed to be. It, but, it was. Uh, Oh, yeah, yes, it was. They, they it made was. it a point. I mean, my first thought when I saw that was like, oh, that's what, because they actually, if you pay attention, they're like, oh, it's so dark. You can't even see things like you didn't apply textures and called it a thing. Yeah. It's not a bug, it's so, a feature. Yeah. Uh, but kudos to the game for actually making uh, the level still be, you know, you could still identify exactly where you were supposed to go despite having, you know, that pitch black thing. Uh, so... 
that not gonna ding at any chairs for that the re uh, the controls everything is rebindable there's a mouse sensitivity slider that actually works ue3 uh if i had to point out an issue is that changing that mouse sensitivity doesn't do shit for actually adjusting the speed of the mouse in the menu so yeah four chairs here <laughs> All right, well, there you go. No technical issues. What about fun issues, Ben? How, how, how's your uncle doing? Your non-existent yeah. uncle? Check it out. If you watch, watch the video version, one of the things that you're greeted with pretty soon after like stealing stuff from your uncle and traveling to this weird moon world is this talking child salamander girl that is genuinely the embodiment of all things. <laughs> no <Nope>. splat. <laughs> Missed it. Um, <laughs> speed. This game's about speed, or it's supposed to be about speed, but it kind of lacks it. Like, the only uh, thing that reminds me of speed is the speed lines that are drawn on the screen sometimes when you're plummeting to your fucking death. Mm -hmm. uh, we kind of talked about this in the pre pre super shows, and, like, how many times I got lost, and, like, Pedro's at a spot right now, where you're <laughs> just in this void of nope, and you're wondering, like, where the hell am I supposed to go? It kind of has a... Uh, like indicators on the ground that don't necessarily give you the correct direction all the time. I got about an hour and a half into this nonsense. And for me, what you're watching Pedro do is kind of the strategy. I think we all ended up having. To yeah. hundred percent. This is my experience. Adopt. too. I mean, yep. this, this is live, die, repeat at cast of the stone. You know, can you imagine if this game had permadeath? Like, oh my <laughs> I would have I given know. up a lot earlier. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I wouldn't have even finished that first fucking level. I'd just be like, oh, nope, we're done on. here. <laughs> so anyway, I, I made it as far as the Sky Village, and I kind of tapped out and on the second windmill ride. I, I uh, couldn't have any more of it. You know, at that point, I had the lizard girl on my back. No real reason to overcome any of the moon physics required not to slam into fucking rocks, because that's a mechanic in the game where you're supposed to avoid them, but that's part of the fun, right? Uh Pedro's like going to do it, and I think you got to do it. <laughs> is we got to compare this to Valley, a game we played a year ago. And so Valley had some funky parts in it too with annoying physics, but sweet holy hell, that Valley hits you like from the first frame with a story that made you want to power through the bullshit parts because you kind of needed some closure. This, like I got a suit and I went to where my uncle threw his trash and I'm trying to find my, I don't fucking care. But where I tapped out, this, you know, this just had me hauling around the salamander girl, you know, basically the third course at a Japanese restaurant, and she's talking <laughs> to my ears randomly. I'm like, shut up. I don't care. Why are you on me? Go away. Kind of what it boils down to is, is really simple for me. The main mechanic is swinging off shit and to shit, and I really don't like the way it's handled. No pun intended. It doesn't feel right. It ignores angular momentum. And I'm not mm -hmm. looking, you know, I'm just like, oh, this game lacks realism as I talk to the sentient, you know, food on my back. So, I mean, it really should feel like we when you're flying through cavernous caves and all this fun. It doesn't. It feels like a damn chore. It's, uh, this, this could be considered like a rage platformer, maybe, but... Un yeah. Unintentional, but yes. Yeah, <laughs> uh, unintentional. And also, you, you can't see your feet. No feet. So, no feet, one chair. Yeah, I mean, har harping, harping on those those salamander kids. I mean, they got a bit of an Innsmouth look. I'm, j I'm just saying. Also, these people are living in Fred, the, the, the titular uncle's waste. And mm -hmm. I think this doesn't get the necessary attention it should, because that's kind of fucked up. Because they also kind of worship him as a god who can go into like the dark place that they can't. I mean, all, all, all I'm all I'm saying is that there, there's like a there's a you're one show goes short of making this a Lovecraftian horror thing. <laughs> you got teleporters, you got traveling to other worlds, fish people. I'm, I'm it's, it's Lovecraft. You know, man, if they just gave me like a hint that shit's going to take a sideways turn or it had the possibility of getting dark. I probably would have powered through. Right? A bit more. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. I get, and, and again, like, the second you go in the basement, like, my brain's immediately like, okay, where do I get the handgun? I want this little child to run around with, like, a six shooter or something. <laughs> um, but, but yeah. Um, here's the thing the platforming in this game is fucking jank. 
momentum mm-hmm. is super fucked up and angular momentum is an entirely different problem you you run into this thing as you're often going to see pedro pa- i have sort of the opposite problem that pedro did where i would put a little too much juice in my in my jumps and then just ricochet off something that i was trying to land on <laughs> and that that in itself is just special kind of infuriating the the grapple mechanic the thing that you're switching you're swinging around with is also super inconsistent because you can be like right next to something and it doesn't show up as like grapp- grappleable, but then if you're like an inch closer, there it is. And it's it seems very inconsistent because you can grapple some like that's a pretty far distance. But there are other things that are like no, it's right in front of you, but you can't grapple well, it unless you're in this exact portion of the. You level. definitely have some things that are highlighted. You're like, oh, I can grapple, but so much other shit like just the random ground is grappable as you find out as you're flailing mm-hmm. to your death, desperately looking mm-hmm. to stick it, to something. It, it absolutely is. And like the, the slingshot mechanic is such that you'll often find yourself just knocking into things on your way there, uh, things that you're supposed to swing off of. And it gets really annoying. And because like this is a core gameplay mechanic, this is this is problematic, to say the least. And I mean, like, I can't I get this is a baby game for babies. Like the, the storytelling is very much like, oh, this is this is someone telling their kid a story. So we're, we're trying to make it relatable to Das Kinder. But <laughs> Like uh, the to bring up the inevitable comparison to Valley, Valley like th- this game is very very linear, but it presents an open world that you for the most part cannot interact with. When Valley does this, um, the linear segments that you're supposed to go fast and like are supposed to follow a track are very very markedly linear, and you don't feel bad about it because you, this is the intended thing. You got to go make the jumps. You got to build up the speed, and this this game does not have that. Um, yeah, the because like yeah, the the level design is fairly straightforward. It's it also does like a really rubbish, it does a really rubbish job of like it, conveying where you need to go and what you need to do sometimes. Mm-hmm. And it's all it's it's a lot of trial and error and a lot of just well, I I gotta do it at this time or I gotta do it at this time. And there are multiple moving parts in the level, so you got to make sure that they all line up. And it's just annoying. It's not fun after like two like one and a half hours of this. I I I I gave up. I, I just was not having fun and I didn't want to do it anymore. I'm going to give it one share. Yeah, a game like this will inevitably see the Valley comparison. Fed's already mentioned it. Jordan's already Woo! mentioned it. Look, look at the T-Rex go. Maybe that's not a bad thing because Valley was pretty damn good. Now, I hear some people say it's like, oh, but Valley came out in 2016 and this one came out originally in 2014. Yeah, the thing is, Valley came out for Linux in October. 2016, while this one uh, only came out on Linux in uh, May 2017. So right off the bat, it's already starting this particular comparison at a disadvantage. Now, Valley made it all about the movement. Speed and momentum were basically the things that you needed to get through the platforming bits. And it did that really well. It focused on that and it worked. In uh, a story about my uncle, the grappling thing breaks pretty much any momentum that you had up to that point and often breaks your perception of speed. Ven already mentioned you get the little blurry lines allowed you, uh, around the uh, the screen if you're supposedly going fast, not that you feel like you're going fast, but that's it. And if once you get the rocket boots in the uh, little sky village after this area uh, that's in the video right now, uh, you get the rocket boots, and the only thing that they do is they make the screen all blurry. And the jump that you're currently doing holds on for a little while, and that's about it. it they're rocket boots, for fuck's sake. They're, they're supposed to be awesome, and you made them boring. Uh, the story. I would very much like to see where this story goes, but the platformy bits and the really crappy um, momentum and sense of movement, it's just terrible. It's like, no, look at that. Like, look, I, I failed that jump too. Even the narrator, as he's telling, he's like, oh yeah, it felt awesome to fly through the air. He's completely meh about the whole thing, so why should I care? I'll give it two chairs because. Eh. <laughs> so uh, I, I just I just want to bring up one thing before we close out. I, I took a I took a peruse through the achievements just because I was curious what this thing achieves you based on them, and there 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 is and it's basically complete the levels 
under a certain number of grapples. So someone hmm. intended for this to be like a speed run optimized path thing. And I do not see how this would happen at all. Mind you, people speed run Pepsi man. So what the fuck do I know? This is true. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and any final thoughts before we kick on over to hate mill? Uh, you know, um, it, I, I just don't like the physics. It's not fun. I'm not, I'm not having a good instead. time. I'm just going fucking really, fucking really, fucking really, and we're done. Yeah, no, Valley was the best example here. Just get that game. <laughs> or if, if you want a longer experience with like some stealth mechanics and some, you know, gameplay, try Shadwin. Might be your jam. Yeah. Mm -hmm.